observe your body, your personality, your instincts, your intellect, your emotions, and your ego. Move beyond the level of identification with your experiences and realize here and now who you really are, who you were, and who you always will be. Live from this level of consciousness from now on. Most people can currently perceive a change is taking place all over the world. For the first time, we are collectively experiencing global events that affect us all and change our lives as we know them. Until now, comparable crises, wars, catastrophes and challenges were limited to individual regions. As a reaction, some take refuge in unreflected acceptance of one-sided propaganda, others in unfounded fear behavior, some in faint indifference, and still others in hopeless conspiracy theories. They all share a bleak worldview of fears, worries, and material bondage. Crises confront us externally like a mirror of what is inside us. They make visible what is unrecognized or unfinished. The current worldwide events are opportunities, like the ranks of a ladder, to help us look at our experiential world from a higher perspective. All of them force us, without pressure and restriction, to recognize who we really are and what is within us. Humanity's greatest battle is not against viruses, terrorists, or dissenters, but rather against the overwhelming illusions of our own thoughts, feelings, and instincts. Our enemies are not on the outside. We are in a war against our illusions. For as long as we believe the colorful bubble and the interpretation of the outer appearance is the whole truth, we are powerless. This phase is a momentous opportunity to make a leap in, conscious, in consciousness as humanity that is beyond anything most can currently image or perceive. A global wake-up call is being directed at humanity. This is comparable to a powerful sound, a special vibration, which shapes humanity awake from the hypnotic dream of the limited sensory world and calls it to contemplate the omnipresent reality. The old normal to which they were accustomed is being perceived by more and more people for what it truly is. It is saturated with selfish and burdensome inclinations, evil tendencies, which until now have made man feel separate from his true nature and from creation. This materialistic normalcy or reckless and irresponsible interaction with our fellow human beings and the lack of respect for creation is coming to an end. The old normal as we knew it is fading away as the sunrise ends the night and begins the day. Neither loud protest, active resistance, nor violent revolution can prevent this. They can delay the process of change in the short term, but they cannot stop or avert it. Some people using great effort want to reanimate the old life and believe it is within their power to do so. But just as a physical birth cannot be reversed, so together we experience the spiritual birth or awakening of humanity 
into a new age. People from different stages of evolution are present at this phase to support humanity in its birth into this important event. Tens of thousands of people around the world are experiencing a process of awakening that is being forced by crisis, restrictive measures, anonymization, isolation, special limitation, apparent or actual disasters, and stoked fears. Every human being is forced in a way that touches him specifically to leave his comfort zone within the old illusion of so-called security. This declaration is intended to serve as a guidepost for those who have already been able to open their eyes slightly. It can offer no help to all those who are still trapped in the illusion and identify with the tools of the body, instinct, mind, feelings, or personality, because they do not have the necessary prerequisites for true understanding. Nor can they consciously use the instrument of higher perception to verify these words. Their purely rational, weakly developed intellect will become entangled in change of argumentative reasoning and ultimately fail to recognize any solution to the current and future tasks of humanity. This declaration is even less suitable for those unawakened people who are trapped in intellectual gimmicks and dogmas of profane philosophies, in the ivory power of so-called sciences, or in the pseudo-religions. The impulses herein would merely consolidate their inability to identify with their material will. Finally, they would also multiply painful emotions such as rejection, ignorance, arrogance, aggression, panic, hatred, fear, separation, reproach, anger, or hostility. Humanity is on the verge of a spiritual breakthrough. Irrespective of all external manifestations, humanity is led on the path of self-realization, freedom, self-responsibility, and the unfolding of creative potential. Those who are already in the spiritual birth process or have already experienced it can and should verify all the impulses described here for correctness and expand with those aspects that are not mentioned by the individual approach to the true being. If the age of awakening, the misguided tyranny of the intellect driven man ends. Just as the sun illuminates the day and is the center of our small solar system, all life here on Earth depends on the work of the sun. The influence of the sun is not only material, but especially it is spiritual. Similarly, our solar system revolves with other solar systems around the central larger sun that exerts an even more serious impact on life. All the galaxies of the infinite universe revolve around a central star which exerts the greatest influence on all of us. As we come to a higher consciousness, we realize that plants, suns, rain, winds, stones, spiritual images, emotions, etc., are living units of consciousness. The profane materialistic view is limited to the lower intellect and therefore incapable of perceiving that everything is alive in all worlds. For the whole creation is an expression of life. The current change is the result of a living vibration that is acting upon humanity and dramatically accelerating evolution. Throughout the cosmos, there is a hierarchy of love and service. The highest consciousness is the central star around which everything revolves. 
who its power of attraction, it sustains everything and fills everything with love. Hierarchical structures can also be seen in nature. There are gradual levels of consciousness, first the mineral, then the plant, the animal, and finally the human kingdom. Above the realm of the ordinary man stands the awakened man. However, the levels of consciousness do not end at this level, but continue to gradually unfold beyond it. The higher the consciousness and the evolutionary stage, the greater the sphere of influence. On the current political stage of the as yet unawakened, populism, propaganda, lies, character weaknesses, biases, promises, flattery, slander, incitement, etc., determine the agenda. These political actors are elected by the people who are not yet awakened. These categories no longer have any relevance in the dawning of the awakened society. The man who has the highest awakened consciousness hears the call, has the inner mission to provide this special service to humanity and will in the future lead the whole of humanity globally. Therefore, there is no need for a democratic election by the majority, because those who are truly awakened recognize and support this leader of humanity on their own by all means available. They perceive him as a leading figure and as what he is. However, this does not result in a new cult of personality, but a common service for the good of humanity. In order for this to occur, it is necessary for a sufficiently large number of people to be awakened to a certain extent and to be able to perceive all of this. Until then, illusions still distort the initial stage of awakening humanity. In this difficult phase of transition, only a council of wise men can guide humanity consciously. This council is composed of wise persons who are themselves awakened in a certain degree and who decide together for the good of humanity. The leader of humanity or the global sovereign is comparable to a conductor of a large core. His task is to coordinate the interaction of the individual singers and to give a material expression to the inner melody of the cosmos. This function is performed by the one who has the highest experience and uh, suitable train, experiential vehicle to express. He will serve humanity like a mentor or coach and take them by the hand and accompany them along the way. This person with the highest consciousness comes from a higher stage of evolution and will initially lead the interests of humanity in the beginning in secret and later will be externally visible. This is inevitable because the higher the consciousness, the greater the sphere of action. This function requires neither an external crown nor a scepter to guide the welfare of mankind. The awakened ones will perceive this sovereign on their own. They will feel no desire in his presence, other than to love and to serve. All crises of this world are crises within our own consciousness. Therefore, there is only one successful way. By changing ourselves, we change the world. Those who want to bring about change can only do so by changing themselves first. The outer world is a reflection of the inner world. As within, so without. As above, so below. Our consciousness is the projector that makes those events appear on the neutral canvas of life that we are living through. We are a center of expression for the original will that always creates and sustains the universe. 
Accordingly, we cause and suffer the effects of our inner being. Causes are never external. External circumstances cannot change our inner being, no matter how much our environment can affect us. As soon as a part of humanity awakens, its collective consciousness will project a different appearance than the externally experienceable world. This new world will no longer correspond to those who have not yet experienced spiritual birth. The inner and outer pressure will grow for these people until they either undergo this transformation as well or are no longer part of this present evolutionary stream of consciousness. The familiar deceptive patterns of politics, economy, society, education, health, family, religion, etc., have been put to the test and are outdated as a model for an awakened humanity. These old templates of the collective consciousness of mankind are backward, selfish, shiny works which are a perversion of a human consciousness. They bind man to the mundane materialistic view of limited identification and isolation. The problems and problematic interpretation of the current living conditions are the result of the misidentification of those who are asleep in their experiential vehicle. For the sleeping person, these tasks are unsolvable as he has not yet awakened to real life. The great fear that many people are feeling at the moment is actually the invitation to come to consciousness and to be creatively active here and now. Those who are already in the process of unfolding perceive their experiential vehicle, body, instincts, personality, mind, feelings, partly or permanently from a higher level of consciousness and do not identify with the small eye or ego, nor with their vehicle, role, incarnation, life history, profession, name, external forms, or outward appearance. They perceive themselves in the external here and now as a perfectly conscious being. They recognize the origin and purpose of their true being perceive that a small aspect of their being has appeared as a physical incarnation with all the prerequisites in this world in order to realize their individual mission of self-awareness. Since the beginning of human history, there have been maps that point the way for the level end of life. Those who have already walked a part of the way pave it for those who follow them. In this way, many and wider paths to the same labyrinth have been created. Some paths are fast and turbulent, while others are slower but stable. Every now and then, there are aberrations and dead ends, which are touted as shortcuts. On the surface, these paths differ, but most have the same goal. Depending on our maturity in accordance with the law of resonance, we choose one of these paths that most closely corresponds to us. In the first stages, most people need seclusion and tranquility to find themselves more easily. However, as soon as they have gone down a part of this path, the skills acquired are put to the test. Material, professional, health, interpersonal, and family challenges then become teaching tools in the curriculum of life mastery. Just as the paths differ, there are also various tools such as meditations, mindfulness, rituals, symbols, devotion, study, prayer, humility, service, compassion, kindness, mantras, 
imaginations, affirmations, words of power, physical exercises, rhythm, counting, mudras, teachings, ethics, moral laws, asceticism, fastening, behaviors, weaving exercises, initiations, etc. On their own, these tools have no inherent power to bring about awakening, but they can, like the ranks of a ladder, assist in the ascent, as the hammer is useless without a craftsman who can use this tool correctly, so too can the tools of awakening be useless if they are not used correctly. In the right environment and under experienced guidance. Some behaviors and tools can be useful and good for one part, but a hindrance on another. Nevertheless, for all of the aforementioned tools, everyday life is our classroom of experiences. We do not need a long distance trip to seek an exotic master in a secluded cave on a remote mountain top in the deepest jungle or in a hidden monastery. We are right now where we belong. We have everything right now at our disposal to take the next step on our unique path. The next step could be a training in a mystery school, a video, an article, an audio book, an experience, or simply an inspiring conversation with colleagues. Only when we implement the acquired knowledge in everyday life can we realize this. Whoever has eyes, let him see. Whoever has ears, let him hear. Many people wish the shiny bubble would return as quickly as possible to the comfort and safety they enjoyed before this global crisis. But it is only now that the overwhelming illusions with which man has previously formulated his existence are becoming apparent. True freedom is an inner attitude. Only when we change inwardly can we experience freedom. The so-called new world order is a symbol of the true freedom of man. Many charlatans have misappropriated the concept of the new world order for their own selfish fantasies. Nevertheless, awakened people yearn for a new order that reflects the truth of man's creative consciousness, undistorted. Whether we are aware of this or not, we all have the absolute power to change this world. This will not and cannot be done for us by an external political savior. The outer world in its entirety exemplifies the collective consciousness of humanity. Peace, freedom, goodwill, and self-knowledge manifest on all levels. But we can and will consciously participate in these stages only when we realize them first within ourselves. Those who preceded us have paved the way for us and provided we awaken to our creative potential, we will likewise pave the way for all those who are yet to follow. A new order does not in any way mean egalitarianism, but rather the perfect expression of individuality, just as each ray of the sun is different. The origin of all rays is in the same sun. Even if the nations are transformed into a global union, the inhabitants still express their uniqueness and different influences and aspects. However, the illusion of competition and separation is replaced by the reality of cooperation that depends on each other. A steady council of wise people will be devoted to fundamental progress. 
This will ensure beneficial knowledge for all branches of society. And at the same time, a constant stimulant for the development of all human beings. The new collective consciousness of humanity will gain access to universal consciousness. Like a light that shows us the way up in the darkness, we are all led step by step to full unfolding. At present, there are different languages, just as there are different nations. But all people are united in an inner language beyond names and forms. They awake and retrain their mental sphere so that they can express this universal language through symbols. In this way, the creative plan of the cosmos will be realized for man. Man will become a conscious co-creator of evolution at all levels of being. In the thoughts and words of the awakened, infallible wisdom takes shape. Only those who understand man in his entirety understand the creation or the creator. In this fading phase of human history, it is still normal for naive political and religious representatives to try to satisfy man's selfishness. For millennia, religions have been used as a tool to manipulate, exploit, and control people. In the last century, materialistic science, with its distorted worldview, limited to appearances, replaced the role of religion. Since then, science has been misused to continue to manipulate, exploit, and control people. Neither religion nor science is in itself bad or malicious, but it's rather what corrupt and selfish people make of it. As long as man still lacks access to the higher consciousness, he lacks the conscious and discernment to use these tools constructively. As long as the verifiable knowledge of the true being is hidden, the misguided man tends to deceive his fellow human beings. Evil is then passed off as something good, abusing people's trust. In the disfigured self-image, the supposed rights of the masses became more valuable than the rights of the individual. Just because many or most people believe or do a certain thing in a certain way does not mean that this is right or virtuous. On the contrary, the previous normalcy proves in an impressive way that everything that the masses have so far interpreted as normal is in fact a backward worldview. Each unit of consciousness is alive and a necessary part of the creative plan. This evolutionary plan is revealed independently of all religious illusory sciences. Since the beginning of creation, there have been awakened human beings who also went down in the history of mankind as great sages. These sages were also fruitful sources for the great world religions. The most important teachings are formulated in wisdom scriptures by them or their disciples. Nevertheless, we need a higher perception in order to draw the wisdom from it. Few of these actualized people intended to establish religions. Rather, they wanted to illuminate the way for seekers with the spiritual light. However, as soon as the first disciples lost access to the higher consciousness, the higher being, dangerous pseudo-religions arose which served the sole purpose of enslavement and exploitation of the undeveloped humanity. These profane, materialistic, shame religions, together with their leaders, were and are trapped in their sensory, experiential vehicle and incapable of expressing higher consciousness. They interpret the words of the Holy Scriptures 
using blind intellect and thus deny themselves and their followers the true path of self knowledge, as this would render them dispensable. Such religious institutions are greatly losing their justification for existence, their misinterpretations of the nature of man, of his origin, and of his destiny are disappearing into insignificance. With the awakening, all fanaticism ends. Most scientific, religious, and spiritual disciples shed limited light on limited dimensions of truth. Therefore, many of their followers tend towards fanaticism as they are denied access to higher dimensions or perspectives of their being or universal consciousness. As a result, they become lost in ignorance, strife, defamation, oppression, and arrogance, fighting those who interpret or perceive the phenomenon or its cause from a different perspective. Likewise, on supposed parts, there are numerous people who imagine themselves to be awakened and merely <clears throat> pretend within their own ideas of awakening. Basically, they still identify with their own vehicle of experience and project the concept of awakening to their ego, thus creating a fictitious experience. Just as you can dream that you are awake while asleep, so this still remains a dream. For those who awaken into the reality of their true being, creative life begins. For the truly awakened, every individual who is also awakened is perceptible. When a certain stage of consciousness development has been realized, the awakened can see, regardless of place and time, how developed an individual is. There are and have been numerous teachings, teachers, and tools that can lead people into a higher consciousness. As long as man strives for virtues such as love, unity, peace, goodwill, goodness, etc., he automatically approaches the true and thus his true being. Depending on the potential of the soul, current seekers will walk such spiritual paths. These different paths represent different perspectives of reality. Many areas currently associated with spirituality will become part of children's school curriculum in the future. Nevertheless, the new priests will play an essential role for these awakened priests will return to their true rules and carry out their original task. The collective consciousness of humanity manifests itself as the outer world. Awakened priests will be choosing to cultivate the collective consciousness like a god. In some religions, the task is called balancing the collective karma, in others, atonement. Karma, the law of cause and effect, is illustrated by our deeds. Every day in the present collective consciousness of humanity, errors, malicious impulses, and destructive patterns increase. Most of these patterns cannot be balanced within one incarnation. For all evil thoughts, feelings, and deeds attract a corresponding effect. The elect priests will also be entrusted with helping people to balance their individual karma or destiny. As a result, collective karma is becoming more and more a shining expression of the awakened humanity. The universal laws of life apply to both the awakened and those who are still asleep. This declaration hints at some of these laws in order to provide orientation. These underlying laws illustrate the operation of infallible justice in all circumstances of life. Laws and freedom seem to contradict each other, but they are intertwined. 
Third, this understanding of the perfect law awakens humanity, is guided on the path of moderation. The desire for freedom is based on the true nature of man. Man is more than his visible vehicle. He is the invisible entity that uses this vehicle for his expression. The present man cannot yet imagine true freedom because he experiences himself separated from his true being and only gradually awakens. For millennia, man has been enslaved by his identification with his ego, emotions, mind, desires, personality, and body. The true being of man, on the other hand, knows only freedom. Only the false identification with this vehicle limits him. In a distorted mirror of life circumstances, we can only recognize distorted forms and therefore judge in a distorted way. But creation is not the interpretation of our distorted senses, but an all-encompassing interaction of living centers of consciousness, of different stages of development that express the just will of universal consciousness. At present, the external circumstances of most people reflect bondage rather than freedom. The individual is a drop in the collective consciousness. Our individual consciousness is responsible for our small individual destiny with its unique life experiences. The collective consciousness projects from within the outer world as we experience it. At present, the collective consciousness is still permitted by the illusion of separation and limited misidentification. For a collective awakening, the collective consciousness and thus our common world is transformed. Thus, the awakened can be self-responsible and live the law righteously in authority and embody the pure image of the ever-enlightening consciousness. The laws that form the basis of our coexistence will be a summary of the laws of life and will take into account the dignity of the awakened one with all his potential. Depending on the level of awakening, these laws will adapt for humanity. There are numerous laws of life that have been taught in Western traditions for millennia. An essential cornerstone is the law of cause and effect. We will reap what we sow. This is our karma. Thus, the legal system of the future will constitute the universal laws of life with the aim of aligning the collective consciousness with the highest virtues. This diminuous or misconduct of an individual can thus be viewed from a different perspective. The individual is responsible for both himself and the whole. The awakened one is anxious to use all his powers to uphold these laws and to be a witness to their realization. These laws set the framework for how creation functions. People who are still in an intermediate phase and not yet fully awakened are prone to transgressions as they identify with the experiential vehicle most of the time. There are many expressions of misconduct, such as spiritual, interpersonal, social, material, etc. A material misconduct is, for example, theft. By being separate from his creative source and thereby being a slave to his malicious instincts, man will sense deprivation and seriously take from others. In the plan of collective and individual consciousness, Everything is recorded as we, as human beings, reap the consequences of our actions. For our being, we bring about a corresponding destiny. A transitional society will punish the thief 
in such a way that this act is chemically compensated. If the bee, through remorse for his evil deed, he can redeem himself and return the value of the stolen goods, thereby repaying his debt and restoring balance for all those involved. Ultimately, the man awakens to consciousness, draws everything that is needed, both spiritual and material, from the inexhaustible riches of boundless substance. Crime is the result of a distorted self image. The criminal already suffers the process of punishment through his deed. Punishment takes place either through society or through life. The law of cause and effect is an undeniable law of life, and it makes no mistakes. In the later stages, the awakened priest or even the awakened judge will assist someone who causes a karmic death to himself and to the collective consciousness through transgression in making up for that debt. This may seem like a punishment, but for the awakened one, there is neither punishment nor reward, but cause and effect. This requires the perception of the universal laws of life so that earthly laws become a pure reflection of the inner reality. The smallest cell of the body is connected to the entire body. Likewise, an individual human being is connected to all humanity. A drop in the ocean is an inseparable part of the whole. People of every nation, denomination, ethnic group, language or culture are cells in the great body of humanity. Together, we form the universal brotherhood of humanity. We are always connected in worldly even though our untrained senses pretend the opposite. Every thought and every feeling has an influence on our fellow human beings. This means, in particular, that we are jointly responsible for the well-being of humanity. As soon as we are already inwardly and awaken to the higher consciousness of unity, we perceive that we are connected to all human beings and have always been connected. This experience of unity is not only limited to human, to human beings on earth, but affects the entire creation, as well as those who are not currently incarnated here. The wider our consciousness, the wider our range of experience. The universal brotherhood of humanity is a synonym for the man who has awakened to true life, life and death are a pair of opposites that will be interpreted differently in the future than in the past. Consciousness is immortal. It animates a material form, the physical body, in its presence in order to have a special experience in this dimension. Consciousness is not bound to a physical existence. This is just one of the many ways to experience life in its completeness. Depending on the task in life, the consciousness chooses the circumstances for an incarnation. The law of resonance brought this soul into a certain time, to a certain place, to a certain environment, to the right parents, etc. The unawakened man is in a dream-like state of death. This is why current social codes of, of conduct and some religions are oriented towards the fact that man is a finite being. Those who go through spiritual birth awaken to real life. They become aware of their immortal, boundless, eternal being. However, if man still identifies with his experiential vehicle in a stumbling sleep state, he tends to be drawn to weak pleasures and distractions. His ego seeks a continuous cycle of play, consumptions, cheap pleasures, and vacations in an easy, comfortable life. 
People who have become aware, on the other hand, set other priorities. These people do not want to be distracted by the mundane life, but perceive the boundless potential of being in everyday life and strive to realize their life intention and purpose. They look at life situations from a different perspective and thus recognize the true expression of their being. Neither luck nor any stroke of fate can have any relevance as they are limited assessments of the untrained mind. The brotherhood of humanity is therefore not a collection of lazy people who have escaped all of life's challenges, succumbed to a world of illusions. On the contrary, the awakened ones do not shy away from work or effort, but enjoy the complete expression of their nature. They rest in action and perfect their consciousness through creation. At present, most people work to make money to meet their needs. This will change dramatically in the future. The awakened man works to realize himself and to fulfill his mission, his purpose in life, or his vocation. To do this, he chooses an incarnation with certain skills and prerequisites so that he can have his experience. This meaningful activity is his vocation, and thus the human being fits like a piece of a puzzle in exactly the right spot. Only this awakened person can fulfill his individual mission. This mission is only for this man and everything in this world is formed so that man can experience this using his own vehicle. Our consciousness has an enormous influence throughout life depending on the consciousness with which we perform an action, the action will have a different effect. Someone who blames and makes others responsible for his current life, disempowers himself and denies himself the opportunity to consciously shape his life. Corporations, politicians, school education, parents, partners, environmental pollution, illness, labor market, economic situations, etc., are phenomena, but never the cause of our current life. To our being, we have called our current life into appearance to make visible externally what is inside us. Our environment may be sick, pure, or unhappy, but if our consciousness is focused on harmony, perfection, fulfillment, etc., we experience all these aspects in our individual life situation. Because of our awakened creative potential, we have the option to change anything at any time. The task of the awakened is responsible contribution to creation. In a future society, coexistence, not illusionary competition, dominates. Many professions that are still popular today will therefore disappear or be redefined, as they will not be of any benefit to creation in the future. New professions will arise in accordance with the level of consciousness of humanity. Higher mental faculties increase due to the unfoldment of, of human consciousness. Consequently, scientific achievement will make enormous quantum leaps. Acting from the higher will and supported by unfailing wisdom and understanding, the awakened one realizes a successful life. For through the perception and understanding of higher laws of the cosmos, these laws can be applied on a large, and small scale for the benefit of humanity and creation. The education of children is the cornerstone of the new order. 
education is a maturing process and also enhances the vehicle of experience. Children are just as limitless a consciousness. They are incarnated in a certain vehicle to have a certain experience. Although they are still clumsy in the handling of their bodies in the first years of their lives, this does not mean that the maturity of their soul is less than that of their parents. In the following generations, the educational development of children will fundamentally correct the collective consciousness of humanity. Thus, this consciousness will increasingly be able to reflect the pure truth of the higher consciousness. This training is independent of external forms, such as school buildings or classrooms, as the external form is irrelevant. The teacher's task will be to promote the child's memory of his true being and to anchor that memory permanently in the day-to-day -day waking consciousness. In this way, the eternal splendor of boundless consciousness is realized. It is also necessary to use the tool of experience, namely to refine the personality, impulses, intellect, and emotions so that they can express the intention of the higher self unimpeded. Children will also learn to develop their ego in order to perceive and let go of it at the next level of growth and perceive from a higher level. The spiritual laws, the universal laws of life, will be just as much part of the curriculum as the rules of harmonious coexistence, family, partnership, health, nutrition, as well as physical strengthening and the development of individual abilities in order to be able to follow the call that is evocation. Also, language, mental and emotional skills will receive training, as well as the inner and outer sciences. Awakened parents have a special responsibility because through the law of resonance, they are connected with the children who incarnate in a specific family in order to deepen their awareness together. It is not necessary for such parents to wait for the future collective development methods of children. They can begin at this moment to promote the children's awareness by talking to the children about the reality and spiritual laws, helping them to perceive this experience inwardly and by exercising an awakened consciousness. In this process, parents themselves in particular realize higher levels of development as they can now implement these lessons in their own lives. The teacher himself learns and unfolds as he teaches. The moon illustrates the influence of invisible forces in the material world through the tides. But the moon is not the only celestial body with an impact on our lives. Our small universe of experiences is connected to the greater universe. Everything in this cosmos has an influence on us. Different unfolding centers of conscious interact with each other on the separate level. Our behavior is similar to a kind of schematic or template that we access. Such blueprints are contained in the collective consciousness of humanity. If a person were to incarnate from a high evolutionary stage, he would be able to shape new patterns more in keeping with his true identity in the collective consciousness. We have all walked through dark phases in which we have expressed more vices than virtues. These phases were or are just as necessary for our development as suffering, pain, or remorse. The more developed the person, the larger the pool of behavioral options. The less developed the person, the fewer opportunities he has to respond to a life situation. 
The vacant does not react, but acts and thus creates new templates that are in harmony with this level of consciousness. Current patterns of behavior in the fields of politics, economy, partnership, sexuality, occupation, money, health, etc., are fundamentally shaken in the first stages of change in order to make these rises apparent. These patterns are turned upside down and deny the good and affirm the evil. Only when these patterns are recognized is it possible to change them. This is the beginning of the purification process of the collective consciousness of humanity. In the transition phase, enormous discipline is required to resist the deceptive illusions of collective consciousness. As more and more people awaken to their true greatness, it becomes easier for them to express their higher consciousness completely and permanently for their vehicle of experience. Then the awakened rests while still in action and his everyday life becomes a living, constant meditation. In thought, word and deed, the awakened one bases his life on the solid foundation of eternal being. A balanced lifestyle with sufficient exercise, little and healthy food, sunlight, enough water, uplifting mental and emotional fear, and phases of relaxation is not absolutely necessary for the awakening, but supports in creating a robust, fortified vehicle. Awakening is more like an unfolding process of awareness than a unique experience due to our spectrum of experience in space and time. With awakening, the treasure trove and storehouse of our consciousness open up to us. This experience changes our way of life as we gain access to universal consciousness and its seven qualities. We can also verify what the scriptures of wisdom report. Thus, we rise from the plane of suffering and fear because only our small eye can have this limited experience while our true consciousness rests in perfection. A bridge to higher levels of consciousness with all the possibilities therein will open up for us. Likewise, we gain the ability to master collective and individual vices, which are equally living units of consciousness. On the one hand, our external health, and on the other hand, everyday life is recognized as a reflection of our consciousness. As a result, we have the opportunity to change inwardly and thus the external appearance changes. In this way, we will inevitably triumph over any misfortune, disaster, adversity or perceived enemy. We gain access to the past, present, and future as our perception is unbound from the constraints of the linear illusion of space and time in the eternal and boundless here and now. The mysteries of life and death, as well as the second birth and resurrection are revealed to us as consciousness is immortal. Our experiential vehicle is transformed, so we gain the permanent conscious connection between our awakened consciousness and our vehicle. We will recognize all the difficulties and challenges of the material world and its original universal living way and reshape them. Likewise, we will tame all the realms under the awakened man, the boundless resources of our higher memory, and the knowledge of humanity will open up to us, and thus we will be able to report on every phenomenon wisely without theoretical study.
Since we are all connected inwardly, we can perceive each other and look into each other, into the depths of our souls. So mutual trust and love will grow. Our consciousness will change what we know in the mundane world as nature because it is the outer appearance of our interior, true nature. This will truly liberate us. Through our awakened presence, we will provide healing and comfort in all we encounter. In the intact unity of our being, we will defeat polarity and restore synthesis in all areas of life. We also then become stewards of the riches of the cosmos. By mastering our inner elements, we master the outer elements and for our consciousness, bring all that were thought to be dead to life. The real adventure to life begins with the awakening. For the creative development of the awakened one, property and resources will have a different relevance. What now appears to be good and important will be of no great importance in the future. As soon as man follows his inner call, the society driven by Enric comes to an end and he becomes a strong link in the chain of the brotherhood of humanity, which in turn provides a valuable service to his fellow human beings. To master the trials of life, it is necessary to take responsibility for one's individual life and situation. The sharp responsibility means to give up power. Taking responsibility means gaining power over one's own life. This concerns health in particular. Due to unsolvable challenges, which are the result of a distorted worldview, a paradigm shift in health will occur. A disease will no longer be seen as a disorder, but as an inevitable message of the tool of experience. The awakened physician of the future will no longer merely eliminate the symptoms of the human being with materialistic health knowledge but will walk the path of healing, of becoming whole, together with the person seeking healing. We can do this by means of insight into the language of life circumstances in order to be a supporter of self-healing in this way. The external food, the water and the air which are available to us at present illustrate our inner contamination on the outside. The awakened humanity will deal more responsible with itself and the creation and therefore with life. Short-term profit without consideration of losses will no longer be the order of the day, but life in harmony with being. Creation is manifold. Therefore, every human being is unique as are his needs. The human being is far more than most can imagine at present. Those who confuse the physical body of man with the whole man are incapable of recognizing what the true man is. The awakened man consciously embodies the kingdom of spirit in his own body. Those who take the present external political and social phenomena for the whole truth confuse one cell with the whole body. The inner and outer kingdoms are waiting to be discovered. Only when we handle wisely what has been entrusted to us are we entrusted with greater responsibility. Then we are ready to explore other worlds and distant galaxies. Will these changes occur in the coming weeks? We are currently in the throes of this great transformation. Some changes will take months, 
others may take years, decades, or centuries. The greatest evolutionary changes, which are not currently perceptible in the concrete terms by most people, require cycles of several millennia.